My name is Michael O'Keefe. I'm an artist working here in Dallas, Texas. And I first became familiar with plaster as a material making waste molds on clay sculptures, which is the process that I'm going to demonstrate here in this video. The sculpture that I'll be casting in this video is a sculpture that was made from observation with a model. And I was trying to work in a very similar fashion to the way Rodin might have worked, or perhaps Matisse might have worked, modeling in clay from a live model. The materials you'll need for this process are the sculpture itself, metal shims, plaster, water, buckets for mixing plaster, oil soap and a brush, a hammer and chisels, a rasp, burlap and clamps, and a spatula. The first step in this process is to insert metal shims into the sculpture. The shims are meant to divide the sculpture into two sections. In this case, I'll be making a two-piece plaster mold, dividing the sculpture into uh, a front half and a back half. Next, we have to mix some plaster. And to make plaster, we add the gypsum powder to water roughly at a ratio of one to one, but the best way to mix plaster is to, to use your eyes and to add powder to water until it just barely sits on the surface of the water. And then you simply stir the lumps out of the plaster so it's a nice smooth consistency. At this point we want to apply the face coat of plaster to the first half of the sculpture using a brush. We want to use a brush here to make sure that the plaster gets down into every little nook and cranny of the clay and it wants to be a nice thin consistency so that any air bubbles can escape from the plaster. And then we want to take a spatula with a mixture of plaster that's further along in the process of setting up so that you can add it to the edge of the mold using your spatula. Then we want to add one more coat of plaster to the rest of the mold so that it's about three layers thick. The idea here is to have a relatively thin mold with a thicker section where the shims are. This gives the mold some uh, strength and, and durability. At this point, you can remove the shims, sliding them out carefully so that you don't affect the original clay sculpture. You want to carve out some registration holes with a sharp tool, a knife or a chisel, so that the two halves of the mold will lock into place nicely when they're put back together. Here I'm painting on a clay slip to the shim line of the mold. This clay slip is just diluted clay or clay that's been mixed with water. Once the, the slip is applied, then we can mix up another batch of plaster and start to brush it on the sculpture, making sure we get plaster into all of the crevices of the sculpture and making sure that we put plaster on the shim edge. After the first face coat, we can then add another coat of thin plaster to the mold. Once both sides of the mold have three coats of plaster, then it's time to add some supports that will give the mold a little bit more structure, a little bit more strength when it's time to pull the mold apart and then pour the plaster in the mold. These are just two pieces of hollow metal rod that I'm applying to the mold using burlap dipped in the plaster and then rolled up and then stuck on to the surface of the mold. Once the plaster has sufficiently set on both sides, then it's time to crack open the mold. At first, you should chisel very lightly until the seam line fractures just slightly. At this point, I like to stick butter knives in the crack and wiggle them a little bit to loosen the two halves of the mold. The type of mold we're making here is a waste mold, which means not only is the mold wasted after one cast, but also the sculpture is often wasted 
in the process of pulling apart this mold, you can see here that my sculpture is essentially tearing into two halves. But this is okay if we've made a good mold because the sculpture is captured in the mold in the negative. Once you've cleaned out as much of the clay as you can, you want to then soak the sculpture in water. Once you've soaked the mold, you want to then pour some Murphy's oil soap into the mold. And then using a large brush, you want to swirl the brush around, creating a froth that covers the whole surface of the mold. You want to soap each half of the mold three times, rinsing the mold in between each application of the soap. And this will assure that the plaster mold will fall off of the plaster cast very easily. At this point, we can rejoin the two halves of the mold and then secure them together using burlap dipped in plaster and then rolled up and tacked onto the surface. Now we want to seal the seam all the way around with dollops of plaster to ensure that no plaster will leak out of the mold when we pour it in. Once the plaster that is joining the two halves of the mold together is fully set, then we can turn the mold upside down. At this point, we want to mix up a couple of buckets of plaster, enough to fill the entire mold. At first, it's best to pour enough plaster to fill only about a third of the mold and then slosh it around to make sure that the plaster gets into all of the crevices of the mold. Then we can add more plaster, filling the mold almost all the way to the top. Shaking the mold is a way to make sure that air bubbles can escape from the plaster. Once you feel like you've got most of the air bubbles out, then you can tap it with a hammer, again, trying to get out as many of the air bubbles that would be on the surface of the cast as possible. At this point, it's best to wait at least an hour to make sure that the poured plaster is sufficiently set inside the mold. Then we can begin to remove the supports, including the supports that hold the two halves of the mold together, and also chiseling away the, the seam of plaster that was covering the crack of the two halves. Once all the supports are removed, then it's time to crack open the two halves of the mold. Again, I start at the top of the mold, and I tap lightly at first, trying to open that small seam again. As much as possible, you want to remove pieces of the mold from the thick shim edge, but at a certain point, you'll have to remove some of the thinner sections by chiseling away at that thin surface, and you want to make sure that your chisel doesn't gouge the plaster cast underneath. Once all of the large pieces of the mold are removed, you may have to use a smaller tool to pull out some small pieces of the mold that are stuck in crevices. You also need to use a tool to remove the shim line, which will be a, a very thin fin of plaster that sticks up along the shim line. Assuming the mold is made properly, in the end, one should have a perfect replica of the clay sculpture. The only difference, obviously, is that the final sculpture is in plaster rather than clay.